going, everybody? It's Bad Brad. And uh, wrapping up my time here in Nashville. Um, <laughs> what a crazy ride, you know. Always, over my 30 years in Nashville, I always had a calendar, and an old school calendar, that I would write down all the different things, you know, types of gigs, where, um, how much money, you know, I got paid or how much I was promised. And that's how I would tell whether I was going to have a good month or not. So this is my last month here in Nashville and things are winding down and I'm taking, there's Elvis. I'm taking, uh, only took a handful of gigs this month because of all the process of moving. Uh, but, you know, here we have a EBB, it's an Eric Blue gig, $300. Um, and then uh, number one party band, which I just did. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm getting on that. I'll wait and see. And here is a uh, Juneteenth gig with Eric Blue. Um, I'm about to do that today. And then... Um, the last gig I'm playing is at Cheekwood and it's a wedding and it's $500. It's a nice, nice payday for Nashville. So, you know, these are, these gigs are easy. These are, these are people I've worked with for years and I don't have to, you know, go following up, you know, too much for money. And, um, it's not a major hassle getting paid. But, um, you know, when you do something you love for a living, uh, sometimes I feel like I was a collection agent and, um, uh, not always a friendly correct, uh, collection agent. Um, uh, you know, my time in LA, our band was managed by, uh, Italians, uh, and, uh, with a very, very New York attitude. I spent time in Berkeley, um, in Boston, going to school there, hung around a lot of East Coast, New York, New Jersey, Boston. Um, I've always somehow, whenever I go, I run into people from Boston or New York. And, um, you know, I don't have a deep Southern accent. I am was born in North Carolina. I was raised in Virginia, but I, I don't, I, you know, to, to Northerners, I may sound Southern, but, um, you know, I learned a lot, uh, by being surrounded by people from the East coast and the way they handle things and the way they don't take any nonsense from people. And I've had to use that myself, um, in order to get paid and, um, you know, I'll talk about, you know, an instance where I used to work for a company that did jingles and it was a small company. There were about four people that worked there. There was the, the owner and the engineer that ran all the software or ran the recording. It may have been ADAT tapes or tapes back then, those, those Sony or Tascam, whatever it was. DAT, I think digital audio tape. That was probably what it was back then. But, and then two office guys. And, you know, I would get a call and they say, uh, you know, so-and-so wants you to come in. We've got a jingle. And that would be pretty much all I, information I would get. And, you know, at this point in my career, I didn't use pedals. I didn't have a ton of gear. So I would take whatever guitar I had whatever wasn't in the pawn shop. And a lot of times it'd be a, a, a strat or a, um, you know, a single, single hum strat so I could, you know, get some overdriven tones if need be. And I usually would have a boogie combo amp of some sort, and it would be a, like a two channel amp. So I would have clean and dirty and some reverb and, you know, maybe, maybe I would throw a wah-wah pedal uh, in my bag just in case they, they, you know, they wanted something like that. 
But man, that would, that would be all I had and all I would take to a session like this. Now, this was not a studio. This was a recording in a house. And um, the amp would literally be placed in a closet, you know, around the corner from where I would be sitting. And my cable would be run under the door and they'd throw a microphone in there. And that's how the guitar would be recorded. And, you know, I always, I would always pray in these type of situations that I had everything that I needed. I knew, oh, I don't, if, what if they asked for a flanger or what if they asked for a chorus or what if. The, this guy never really asked for anything like that. And for the most part, the guitar parts that I would play would be some of the most unobtrusive, un, you know, you know, people think when I say, oh, a jingle session, they think, oh, you go in and, oh, today we want you to do Stevie Ray Vaughan or today we want some Van Halen or today we want, you know, this. No, this, this was none of that. The only time where I got to sort of crank it up just a tiny, tiny bit was um, we did a session and they wanted the, the guitar, like a guitar solo, kind of like We Will Rock You. So I, I did something, you know, kind of like that. And I dialed up a voxy kind of overdriven type tone and, and, and gave, them, gave them a Brian May type solo. But normally it would be just really simple stuff. You know, maybe some chicken picking kind of just R&B flavory kind of stuff. Not country chicken picking, but but that, that kind of uh, R&B style stuff or some basic chords or maybe just a little simple parts. It would be very unobtrusive things. And this was a lesson learning that, you know, you don't always have to just play your ass off and, you know, do all this kind of stuff. You know, just, just play what the guy wants and get out. And that's, that's what this was. And so um, I would do, you know, one or two of these, maybe a month. And the pay would always vary. You know, sometimes I think it would be like 90 bucks, you know, but it, you're looking at like an hour, hour and a half tops of your time. So, you know, it's just a calendar filler. It's something you'd get on a Monday, at, you know, at noon. And, you know, those are days when we, we wouldn't really have any um, gigs, you know, on a Monday, especially in the old Nashville, you know, Mondays, Tuesdays, you know, it'd be dead. So this one time I went in and I did the session and they were like, oh, that's great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's going to be 30 days before we can pay you. Okay. Uh, so I'm thinking, all right. So 30 days go by. And I, I watched the calendar and it, it may have been a day after or two days after, but I call back and they say, um, no, um, it's going to be, uh, no, it's actually 90 days. And so it's going to be 60 days, um, more. And <laughs> I hung up the phone and I thought, what the, what the heck? Like, dude. No. So I literally called back and I go, and, and I, I got New York very quick and I go, I'm coming down there and you're going to write me a check today. I'll be there in 15 minutes. <laughs> and so I go down there and I walk in the office and they write me a check. Here you go. And I think, I think it was a pretty good check. I think it might've been like 460 bucks. So this may have been a special project that they were doing and it paid more and, and maybe, maybe they didn't get paid yet. I don't know. And frankly, I don't care because, you know, in this business, you get jerked around by people all the time. And they'll say, oh, I, I don't, you know, it, oh, it doesn't pay yet or this and that. And meanwhile, they're eating at the local, you know, uh, four-star eatery and they're, they're living their life. 
and you're over in your $300 apartment that's just almost got kicked, the door kicked in by some, you know, idiot that's trying to rob you. And he, you, you need the money. You need the money. So getting paid is not always easy. And yes, I have had to collect. I have had to get a slight attitude and say, I'm coming over there now and you're paying me and not accepting no for an answer. So, you know, I would have thought that maybe I blew it with these guys and maybe they would never call me again at that, at that, at that point. I didn't care because, you know, you need the money, you need the money, end of story. But no, they called me back and I worked with them probably at least another year and, um, you know, would do little sessions for them, for Budweiser, for IMAX. I remember we did something for IMAX. We did something for Budweiser. We did a bunch of different, you know, things. And um, I don't think they were upset that I came to get paid. I think they probably understood. I think they wanted to delay as long as they could when they could cut me a check. But um, I don't regret going over there collection style and saying, hey, man, give me a check now. You know, and there have been other instances where um, I've had to do the exact same thing, go and collect. And so um, you're going to have to stay tuned for more of those stories. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. And if you need anything from Amazon or Sweetwater, hit the link in my description and um, purchase anything. Anything you buy helps the channel. I want to thank you so much for tuning into this video. I don't have much longer here in Nashville. So um, hit that like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.